In the early 80s, when people uh, and clients thought that uh, you know treasury bonds and treasury bill futures were akin to soybeans, uh, you know, you had to go out. <laughs> Chris Dionis and I went out with a T-shirt uh, said, you know, the wave of the future. But uh, clients said, uh, is this like uh, soybeans? Or are you trading corn? Um, but the spreads were enormous in terms of value, and on and on and on uh, with tips and with global bonds we got in early. When Bill Gross, then 22 years old, was involved in a near-fatal automobile accident, he was forced to spend almost an entire year in the hospital. To pass the time, he began reading about the art of gambling. Then he found a book called Beat the Dealer, authored by a mathematician, Edward Thorpe. His book teaches who how to win the casinos in the blackjack game. He devoured the book from cover to cover, it became his holy bible. Gross firmly believes that it is possible to get wealthy from the casino. Welcome to Street Savvy Finance, the channel that analyzes the financial strategies of millionaires, billionaires, and financial experts so that you can achieve your financial goals faster. Whether you want to make more money or be better with your finances, we have something for you. Please watch this to the end so as not to miss some vital pieces of the puzzle. And please don't forget to hit the like button. For most individuals, raising money via gaming is a futile endeavor, but not for Bill Gross. He has a strong feeling of self-assurance that is backed up by a certain amount of mathematical certainty. Within six months, he had grown his original $200 investment into a $10,000 profit, which was enough to cover the cost of his MBA tuition at UCLA. Perhaps the most well-known bond investor in the world, Bill Gross, is really in a league of his own. His CT portfolios have grown at an average annualized rate of 10.6% over the last five years. Since 1973, the company has been in business. Consider the implications of that for a moment. His results are similar to those of an index of the stock market. However, Bo Gross only had three years of negative returns, with an average return of 2.3%. A stock market, on the other hand, may fall by as much as 23%. Bill Gross was born with Asperger syndrome. I'm an Asperger, uh, and Aspergers can compartmentalize. They can operate um, in in different universes without the other universes affecting them as much. As I've understood it, it, it in 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 my uh, experience, it's allowed me to stay at. 30,000 feet as opposed to be on the ground. I think it, yeah, I think it was very important uh, because it allowed me to take what uh, we call the secular approach at PIMCO, the long-term view, and it was it was a good view to take as an Asperger. Now, if if I was a quantitative trader, hedge fund manager, day-to-day, minute-to-minute, boom, 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 not so good. Perhaps as a result of Asperger's, education was very uncomplicated for him. He got admitted into Duke University, which is considered one of the most renowned universities in the United States. He hoped to get a better understanding of his thinking. After a terrible turn of events occurred shortly before he graduated, he decided to study psychology. A horrific accident completely turned his life upside down. The 22-year-old Gross was involved in a near-fatal automobile accident during his final year at Duke University when Nash Rambler slid into oncoming traffic on an icy road. He was thrown through the windshield, and about three-quarters of his skull was severed. He spent the remainder of the semester in the hospital, undergoing numerous skin, grafts and treatment for a collapsed lung. Bill Gross then read the book titled, Beat the Dealer, which offered a unique method for blackjack players. Gross was of the idea that repeatedly putting smaller stakes if an advantage would result in a maximum return soon. You know, ran afoul of my old blackjack uh, maxim that said you can never bet more than 2% of your... Um... Within six months, he had turned his original $200 investment into $10,000, which was a significant sum of money in the late 1960s. Gross realized at that point that he wanted to pursue a career in business. The financial market was a special attraction for him since it allowed him to test his gambling prowess. But, just as he was about to go on his MBA program with the money he had earned, tragedy struck again, his closest buddy from college, who was like a brother to him, was killed in combat during the Vietnam War. Gross decided to voluntarily join the military to honor the memory of his slain friend. Bill Gross was deployed to the Vietnam War for the following three years. Bill Gross spent the following three years in the Vietnam War's trenches, working as assistant chief engineer aboard the USS Diazenko, carrying Navy SEALs to landing spots along the Vietnamese coast. He departed the Navy in 1970, 
as he planned, with Technical Combat and Vietnam Active Service Medal. He applied to and was accepted into the UCLA MBA program. The 1973 oil crisis brought the United States economy to a grinding halt. Inflation rates in the United States reached some of the greatest levels throughout the 1970s. Consequently, the performance of fixed income investments reached the worst phase it had experienced in decades. I go, well, I go, you know, Mom, and I guess I just said Mom, but Dad was there too. I said, you know, Mom, I'm going to be the best portfolio manager in the world. And they looked at me like I was from Mars. But somehow I knew that was my goal. I, d I didn't know what was going to happen, but that was my goal. Bill Gross began his career at Pacific Mutual Insurance Company in 1971 as a junior bond analyst. When Gross started at Pacific Mutual in 1971, bonds were not widely traded, they were somewhat vaulted. However, due to the high inflation rate, it was almost difficult to earn any actual profits on bonds. Gross, on the other hand, had a solution, aggressive trading. Daily active trading of bonds seems risky, perhaps more so in the 1970s. However, Gross believes that by doing so, they were able to foresee large variations in inflation and thus hedging the risk. You know, we got in early. Um, we got into financial futures very early. Um, in the early 80s when people uh, and clients thought that uh, you know, Treasury bonds and Treasury bill futures were akin to soybeans. Uh, mm -hmm. The Treasury futures versus Treasuries was was sort of a riskless arbitrage, and so we, we got there early, and uh, there was a lot of alpha generated from that, not necessarily from brilliant long-term interest rate call. His boss at Pacific Mutual agreed to grant him $15 million to start a bond portfolio after hearing a convincing argument. By the late 1970s, Pacific Investment Management Co., annotated PIMCO, had been founded. To give you a sense of how insane that sounds, it's almost as if you're asking a parent to day trade their money, which would seem risky to most people. Bill Gross had a distinct perspective on risk, one that was based on solid mathematics. Gross is certain that his portfolio will always be profitable as long as he adheres to basic gambling rules. To begin, each wager must have an advantage or a 51% probability of being correct. Second, each wager should be appropriately proportioned. This is making modest wagers on less certain outcomes and larger wagers on more definite outcomes. Perhaps the most critical idea in gambling is the bet size. However, it is often ignored by financial traders. And although all of this sounds good in theory, none of it counts if a gross fails to deliver in reality. Since bonds were not widely traded, the market was extremely volatile. PIMCO was one of the first active bond traders, holding and selling a diverse range of positions in mortgage-backed assets, tips, bond futures, and convertibles. In the early 80s when people uh, and clients thought that uh, you know, treasury bonds and treasury bill futures were akin to soybeans, uh, you know, you had to go out, <laughs> Chris Dionis and I went out with a t-shirt, uh, said, you know, the wave of the future, but uh, clients said, uh, is this like uh, soybeans, or are you trading corn? Um, but the spreads were enormous in terms of value, and on and on and on, uh, with tips and with global bonds we got in early. Gross was engaged in a zero-sum game, similar to gambling, when the rest of the market was unaware of the game's existence. His bond holdings had grown to $40 million after four years. The approach paid out in 1975, a year when passive bondholders battled to Gross, flipping a 17.6% game and over 18% in 1976. With various unusual trading methods, he beat the fixed income sector for the following three decades. PIMCO had grown to $3 billion by the end of 1999. Bill Gross, on the other hand, saw a massive financial bubble forming. In his monthly investing piece, he predicted that the dot-com bubble would explode shortly. Only a few people paid attention. On the other hand, Gross is unconcerned because he recognizes that a stock market fall may be beneficial to the fixed income market. He and his associates sold PIMCO to Alliance for $3.3 billion the same year. He earned $233 million for his share, with an additional $40 million in retention payments from Alliance. Bill Gross, now as wealthy as ever, leads a life of luxury. Despite his enormous fortune and extravagant lifestyle, Bill Gross remains anchored in the realities of the market. He had a premonition of the U.S. housing market collapsing one morning in 2005 while standing on his head when he observed that property prices in the area were skyrocketing. Someone in Modesto, California with five 
a home for $500,000 that it sold 24 months before at 250. Um, you know, it was simply a mistake, as were the dot coms, as were, you know, many stocks and as were many uh, levered bonds uh, and bond structures, by the way, uh, simply 12 to 24 months ago, the subprimes being the, uh, the prime. He wondered if this was happening throughout the country. To investigate, PIMCO deployed 11 mortgage experts to 20 cities. They posed to be a home buyer and drove about with naive real estate agents and mortgage brokers, who assured them that getting a home loan would be simple. He issued one of the most urgent warnings of the last decade in an October 2005 letter to investors, warning of the coming subprime mortgage disaster, but everyone disregarded him once more. PIMCO's total return fund was up 4.3% in 2008, explaining why Wall Street was losing so much. However, the risk of the entire financial system collapsing was still there. The U.S. administration was frantically attempting to extinguish the fire. They wanted to bail out banks while avoiding moral hazards. And moral hazard occurs when someone takes more risks knowing that he would be bailed out. Instead, officials sought Bill Gross' help, asking him to join them in bailing out the banks. Nationalizing banks goes against what Bill Gross stands for as a Republican. As a bond speculator, though, this may be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to earn handsomely. Bill Gross secured an almost risk-free arrangement with the government, guaranteeing a 25% return. He had put 61% of his money into mortgage bonds by the end of 2009. This investment is practically risk-free because the government is responsible for repaying Pinko's debts if things go wrong. Gross rose to prominence as one of the country's most powerful financiers after Wall Street collapsed in 2008. PIMCO grew year after year under Bill Gross's leadership, amassing trillions of dollars in assets under management and netting Bill Gross billions in personal wealth. He is the bond king in every sense of the word. When you're king, everyone wants to sit on your throne. Bill Gross was dismissed from the firm he established in 2014 due to a power tussle. The executive committee in Allianz at some point said, uh, you know, this guy is got to go. So, so the lesson therein is? Is to, is to not to pack the executive committee or pack the Supreme Court, but to make sure you have some friends on it. <laughs> I, didn't have a, I didn't have a single supporter on there. Furious, Bill Gross sued PIMCO and was compensated $81 million. However, that same year, Bill Gross joined Janice Henderson, PIMCO's largest competitor, to run Janice Henderson's global unconstrained bond funds. Bill Gross formally retired from active asset management in 2019 at the age of 74. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it or share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe to Street Savvy Finance channel and drop your comments below. Stay tuned for the next recommended video, and stay street savvy.